Today we're going to do something a little different over here at DIY Auto School. That's uh, DIY Do It Yourself Auto School. Everything I do over here is basically DIY Do It Yourself. Now, some of the stuff I do requires special tools like welders and grinders and stuff like that. But I show you videos of anything and everything that I do that you can basically do yourself. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. What we got here is a humongous giant trailer. This is one of them big dog giant trailers. It's a, a trailer that is, I don't even know how long. You can see it right here. And it's just a big bastard. It's like 14 feet tall, 15 feet tall or some shit like that. Maybe it's taller than that, I don't know. But it's a tall bastard. And from my understanding, this thing weighs 5,800 pounds. I think that's what it was. 5,800 pounds. So that's a lot of weight. Maybe it's 58,000 pounds. Fuck, I don't know. All I know is this is a big giant machinery to go camping in for a, you know, a one or two day camp trip. And uh, yeah, you can see the truck that's pulling this thing. It's a big giant Ford 4x4 uh, diesel truck. And it's just a big monstrosity of a rig. Now, the problem you have with these rigs, and all of these rigs have this problem, and I'm going to show you how to fix the problem at hand. So before we go any further, let's take a look at my driveway that comes in off of the street. Here's the street. You come in here, and then bam. You see how I'm doing that? Bam. You got a downslope. That's a downslope about a grade like this right here, and then it flattens out and it's straight. Let's look at this trailer and see where the axles are placed on this big giant monstrosity. You can see the axles are way up here in the front. What do we got in the back? We don't have nothing in the back. So what happens is when that thing's doing a tail dragger and it bottoms out, it doesn't just bottom out, it pretty much ruins everything in sight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this piece of shit. All right, I'm gonna cut that off and you can see how cheap the metal is on this thing. Look at that, it's like paper thin crap. All right, I don't, I don't even know what gauge it is, I don't care. So we're gonna replace that. And then what I'm gonna do once I'm done replacing that, I'm gonna show you how to fix your trailer if you own one of these big monsters. And even if you don't own one of these, you can do it on a small trailer. Any type of trailer that you have that you don't wanna bottom out when you're driving in to, let's say, other people's driveways, for instance, or possibly the gas station, or maybe even the campsite that you're going to. Let me go ahead and change that bumper out real quick, or at least get it off out of the way, so we can see what we're gonna do to fix this situation so Mr. Big Monster Guy here won't bottom out on his trailer anymore. All right. Now, if we've taken the rear bumper off of the trailer, and you can see how high it sits. You can look at me, look at me. Okay, you can see it sits up pretty high, but come on over here. What do you see that's very unusual on this trailer that will cause the bumper to crash, wreck, burn, and, and, and screw up? What are you looking at? What do you see? A big, long trailer. There's a trailer, but where is the axle placed on the trailer? Oh, right in the middle. The trailer axle's way up there, so what that means is when you come down an incline such as our driveway, I've already explained this, what happens? Minnie, the body shop girl, tell everybody. The back end drags the ground. That's right, so when you pull into the gas station or you pull into your camping area, the first thing that happens, the rear bumper's gonna drag. Let me show you how cheap this is for an $80,000 rig. Come on over here. 
Look how thin and cheap that is. Okay, it's like paper. Now the one I got is the next size up, the next thickness up. So it's like double that one, okay? But you can see where it ripped the bumper out down on the bottom here and it just pulled it away because it was dragging. Do you understand? Got it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this guy's trailer by making it safer, secure, and more, what can we say? Balanced, maybe? I don't know. How about money saving? How about saving money in the long run? How about if this thing actually really bottomed out and that bumper broke, it might wreck the fiberglass? You see what I mean? Yeah. If he took a real dive, what's going to happen? It's going to rip all this on the bottom. Look luckily, what happened over here to a solenoid. See that solenoid? It it's all bent up. It's broke. All right. Look at that. Okay. This is the solenoid that runs his uh, his uh, uh, jack stands. All right. To yeah. keep it all balanced. So what we're going to do is we are going to take these plates. Look what I got here. I got some plate steel. Now you see how thick that is? That's real thick. Okay, we're going to modify this. We're going to weld those to the frame rail. All right. And then I want everybody to look at these wheels. These aren't your typical average wheels. All right. This wheel is made out of bowling ball material. Do you know what bowling ball material is? Some type of Watch hard this. rubber. Stand back. I want to show you. Okay, this is a shock resistant. This thing here, one wheel, all right, is equivalent for 5,000 pound of thrust per square inch. Watch this. Do you see that? Huh? Did you see what I just did? Watch. I'm going to show you again. Are you ready? Watch this. I now why do you need a wheel like that? I want to wait a minute. I want to see if something's wrong with it. Hang on. Let's check it out. Really check it out. Go ahead. Check it out. Okay. Check it out, Glid. You see anything wrong with the wheel? I don't see anything wrong with the wheel. Okay, now why would you need a wheel like that? Can you go ahead and answer that question? Well, I guess to keep from bottoming out on That's this right. Let me tell you. Design trailer. No, this wheel has to support 5,800 pounds over here. All right. So you can't put just any wheel on it. You have to get the wheels. Let me do it again. Watch way up here. Okay that are designed for the fucking job. You understand? Okay. When that trailer bounces down and hits that, it's gonna come down like that. You see what I'm saying? Watch. You see there? It's gonna hit like that. It's gonna bounce on the concrete. So what's that gonna do? It's not gonna break. Rubber wheels are not the way to go. You have to get the bowling ball compact situation. Now there's another thing about this wheel. I want to show you something. What's it doing? What's that called? Swivel. That's right. Do you see anything different about a swivel bearing style compared to this? Look at how heavy duty that is. Do you see what I'm saying here? Well you would think it would need to be as heavy duty as possible since it's That's going right. on a moving vehicle. This is a very very heavy duty wheel. All right and you don't want to use a lot of guys are going to tell you get the Get the, uh, uh, the stabilized wheels. Don't use the swivel ones. What's going to happen if I put a stabilized wheel on this frame? Come on over here. It's going to twerk it. What's going to happen? Bend it. That's right, because when you're turning that corner, when you're rolling in this driveway, look at this driveway. You're coming in this driveway. And there's your And dip. the tra trailer's 100 feet behind you, and it's dragging the back end. What's going to happen? It's going to tear it up. It's going to bend that frame rail because that wheel isn't spinning freely. Or it's going to tear the wheel off of there. Or now, something's exactly. Gonna, something's going to give somewhere. Now, this is the situation you have on wheels. I'm sorry, I accidentally dropped it. Quit fucking I'm sorry. It. Did I scare you? Well, you <laughs> act like an ass, yeah. Did I scare you? Yes. Okay, is that scary? Think if your frame cracked and broke in bed, and look what's going to really get you more scarier than that. Are you watching? Look, now you're messing it up. Look what's going to get you more scarier. When you got to pay somebody $30,000 to fix the back end of your trailer because you didn't want to put the right wheel on Look it. Look at your wheel now. Oh, wowie wow. It made a little scratch on it. Well, quit fucking doing that then. Okay, I don't mean to scare you. 
but you got to see the situation. Oh, no, you don't have to do okay, that you got to see the situation where it, impact is a big thing here. Yes, Am I right or wrong? I think everybody heard you the first time. Okay. Now, can you tell me how big that wheel is? Uh, it looks to be about 10 inches. That's an 8 inch wheel. 8 inch, well I was close. Now, the closer you get it to the back end, the better it's going to hang. It's going to ride and, and, and rotate and be the situation that it needs to be to work properly. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. The real deal is though, is this situation right here. You have to get that type of bearing. I don't know what it's called. I just know it's called super duty, heavy duty, uh, you know, 5,000 pound per square inch situation. That's all I know. Hell, all, all right? you know is, is the owner came over here and said, here, put these on. No, all I know is the owner came over here bitching and whining and complaining because you know who he is? He's our buddy, Mr. Pollock Less. All right? That bitches and complains about everything. Now, another thing he that you want to do. as much as you do. Another thing you want to really make sure about getting these wheels is look what we got. Do you see that right there? A nut? That's right. And we also got what? A nut? No, it's a grease zerk. A grease zerk. You can grease them there and you grease it here. Uh, but the real thing is, if you mount this style, all right, this style caster on your frame, the only thing you'll have to change, which is probably never, if it ever happens, is the wheel itself. You want to make sure that you get a caster that has the replaceable wheel. I'm sorry, I dropped it. I'm sorry. Damn lucky you didn't hit my foot. Came close. I know. All right. Go ahead and sit down there, baby. No, because you'll hit me in the knee. No, I'm not. Thing, sit man. down. I'm going to get up under the car. So I'm not here to show you how to weld it on and bolt it on and all that. Now, I paid $2.45 over at the scrap iron yard for this. Now, the problem that we really have is the frame rail itself versus this. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a lot bigger. Well, the problem you have is I can actually weld this on there and it probably lasts forever. But we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that this is a replaceable so, unit. So hang on a minute. Let me ask you something. What's up? Well, how is the bumper, where does the bumper go in relation? It's right here. Flat on the bumper there? bumper goes straight across or here. Or does it push into, does No, that... it goes flat up here and then we weld it on. So it, so the bottom of it is level with the bottom the of... The bottom of this is level with this, the yes. The bottom of the that's bumper. That's right, exactly. So then that's going to go on this the This is bottom. a four inch... Why this... don't, let me ask you this. Why don't you put it half on the bumper and half on your post Frame here, rail. Like this. Well, I could do that. I could do that if you want me to. All right, so I'd weld that on there, and that would actually work better. Uh, Minnie the Body Shop Girl, thank you very much. It's my engineering mind. My engineering mind. For, for coming up with that suggestion, because what will that do to the bottom of the bumper? I think it'll give it even it'll more It'll give it more strength. Now, hold on a minute. Let's think this out real quick. Or will it? Because if you look at the bottom of the bumper, that's where the bumper ripped off from the frame rail. So, the situation we have that I was looking at, the mounting pad on this isn't that big. I was hoping it would be bigger, but if I go like this, I can see that I'm still going to have enough room on my plate steel. I can't hold it up there. It's, it's moving. All right, I can mount that in between the frame rail and I'll still have enough. If you can look at it, you see what I'm saying? There's a bolt hole on each side of that. Yeah. And I think I could put that plate steel on there and then I'll drill holes and weld the wheels to the what? To the plate? To the plate. And then that way, if these ever get ruined or something happens to his wheels, they're a replaceable wheel. Now the problem we have is that look at that hole. I would say that's only going to accept a 3 8 nut and a bolt. Yeah. That's not that big. No. So we're going to have to use grade 8 bolts and nuts on that. Well, yeah, you would want to do that anyway. Now, another thing that I'm going to do for special protection is I'm going to put a spot weld on this side of it, and then I'm going to put a spot weld on this side. But I'm not going to weld it all the way around. That way, if it ever breaks or comes off, what's going to happen is he'll have to take a cutting wheel, cut that weld off, this weld, take your four bolts off, bam, it's done. Okay, you, you, I just had another brainstorm. <coughs> 
what? Do you want to hear my other brain? Yeah, story? sure. Maybe the body shop girl. Hold that back up there. That's kind of heavy to hold. Okay, just hold it back up okay. there. You're strong, man. You're strong guy. Okay, you got that up there. Right. You could take and make a clamp. Uh, no, well, so, where like a like a rod and bend it. A clamp. Two rods right. and bolt it here this way. You could do that. And then weld it too. You could do that if you wanted to. The problem you have when you use the clamp system is eventually, from all the weight of this trailer, which is 6,000 pounds, hitting down on that is eventually going to stretch and ply on those bolts. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So it'd be better to bolt it solid to a plate of steel like this, all right? And then that way, what are we going to have? A nice solid mounted wheel. Does that make sense? So. The suggestion we had from many is to go ahead and weld the bumper back on the vehicle and then take our 4x4 four four plate, or is that 6? Let's see. Alright, that's a 6x6 six six plate. Weld it between the bumper and the frame rail, am I right? And then weld that back here. That way the wheel's back here. Would that be more safer, do you believe, and, and have all that weight hitting that bumper like that, or would it be safer to put the wheel back here? that's on this nice solid frame rail. Because we might run into a problem having that weight of the trailer hitting down and what can happen is it can go like this yeah. and maybe crack the welds around the bumper and then what do we got? We got a big mess. We got a big mess because now besides cutting all this off like I did, now we got to cut the welds off of this and blah 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 and it's just a pain in the ass bitch. All right. So I'm going to put it right there just like that we're going to weld this on here, drill our holes out, and then we're going to bolt our wheels on. When we get that done, we're going to come back and take a look at it. We're going to have Minnie back the trailer up onto the high-rise apartment complex we got in our driveway, and we'll see if this action really works. How does that sound? Apartment complex? What yeah. What are you talking about? High-rise. It's way up in the air. When the trailer goes down, it hits the ground. It's a combat. It's a clown act. It's a joke. It's a farce. Okay, whatever. Okay. So I think what I need to do is get to work. We got a lot of welding to do here. A lot of hole drilling. Minnie's going to have to go over to Lowe's. She's going to have to buy a 3 ace drill bit because I don't have a good enough one to drill eight holes in that. And at the same time, you're going to buy some grade eight bolts with some lock nuts and grade eight washers. And I think we can get this job done down the road, off my property, and back to Crybaby Pollock Guy. Less. All in one fucking day. All in one day. Let's get her done. I'm gonna grind this down where I'm gonna weld it, and we'll be down the road. Why isn't this working? What the hell? Did you unplug me over there? What happened? I didn't unplug it. Okay, well, fix it. It's not working. Fix it. Fix it, fix it, fix Come it. Something happened, it's not working. Well, I don't know why it's not working. It'll blow a breaker or what? What the fuck here? Okay, you can turn it off. We'll be back and hopefully this little transition helped you the RV guy out in the big RV world that you live in and uh, I don't really have a name for those wheels I mean you just gotta search and see giant casters they're 8 inch casters but take a look at it and we're gonna go back over it and we'll show you when we get all done we'll see you later oh, I turned that bitch off dang it's dark you've been working on this all fucking day yeah baby okay <laughs> We gotta get the clown clock act going on hey, this whoa, thing, whoa, huh? Whoa, whoa, Ain't no clown clock action here. Yeah. Hey, you want us to tell the real story now? What's Wanna go ahead and tell the truth? Or are you guys tell them I took all day on that? I'm gonna tell them you took all okay. day. Okay, you can do that. I'm gonna let you do that this time. Actually, everything.
This job went really well and with minimal cussing and screaming. Actually, there was really no cussing and screaming. It's amazing. There was a little cussing and screaming from you. All right. Be honest. Be honest. There wasn't. You didn't cuss and holler when you pinched your finger with the wrench? You pinched my finger with the wrench. All right, let's look this thing over. Come on. So if you can come over here and follow my hand, uh, what I did, I welded this plate on there. I drilled my holes. You can see that it's welded very strong. I went ahead and put the bumper back on it. And then we went ahead and bolted the wheel. If Minnie can bring the camera down. We went ahead and bolted the wheel to the plate. Now, this is the way that you want to do it. You want to bolt that on. You don't want to weld it due to the fact that if anything happens to our caster or our wheel, we'll be able to replace it. We went ahead and used, if you can bring your camera up here now, look. We went ahead and used grade 8 bolts. Thank you to many of the body shop girls. She got them just a little bit long, but that's okay. We stacked washers and compensated for the length. So, and everybody, if they hear, so if you ever hear anybody say, bigger is better, don't listen to them. Many likes the word bigger is better, but on this situation right here, shorter is the way to go. Thank you, Minnie the Body Shop Girl. In reality, to tell the truth, Go the ahead. store only had that length. Tell us the truth. Length. So it was either that one or this long. Okay, so, so you went the shorter route. Yeah, of what I had to choose okay. from. Thank you very much. Minnie right. the Body Shop Girl. So if I get down here with it, I want to show you that this action right here, you can see that this is a heavy-duty caster once again. We went ahead and greased our bearings up right there. And also on this right here, we went ahead and used the grease gun on the wheel as well. That's going to give us a long-lasting life, and our uh, caster is going to work very, very well. You're asking me how much these casters are, and I want to give you the name of that. It's called Al Beyond. A-L-B-I-O-N. Do you see that right there, Minnie? Uh-uh. Not from the okay. angle. Okay. Can saying. you bring the camera over here, and maybe? There you go. A-L-B-I-O-N. So look that up on the internet. That's the wheel you want right there. Look at the heavy-duty casting action that we got. Now, I What's want to tell you... What's it made out of? It's made out of bowling ball material. All right? Bowling ball material. Yeah. Back it up a little bit. Back it up. Now, I want to go ahead and let you know how much these were. Now, I did not buy these online. There might be cheaper online. These were approximately, with tax, 50 bucks a piece. So that wasn't a bad deal. Uh, they were about 47 85 or something like that per wheel. Uh, and I would rather pay 100 bucks and a little bit of labor to save my trailer then have to replace the bumper again and also look what we got here all right a busted solenoid and whatever else is gonna break okay it's getting a little dark out here so I'm gonna go ahead and use the spotlight as an action cam situation if Minnie wants to hold that and be the camera girl and the can you do that you want me to be the lighting? lighter yeah the lighting light person there you go and the camera okay girl. so it's getting dark out we can see that I started on this approximately five o'clock at night the sun's setting about 7 30 that took approximately two and a half hours to do this job. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get in the truck, I'm going to back it up, and if many can follow me, we got an incline right here where I'm walking. Minnie is going to be up here filming it to see what our caster wheels are going to do and if it's going to save our trailer from any more, uh, what can we say, future damage. Here we go. There we go. Pete's fixing to back up the trailer up this little slide incline and we're going to see if his wheels keep the ass in from dragging. We're ready! Go! Don't go fast! Here we go. Keep your eyes on the wheels. Come on back! Watch your mirror on the side of the building! Alright, come on back! You're getting close! Come on back! It's about six inches off the ground! And it's on the ground! And the wheels are rolling, rolling, rolling! And it's looking good. It's looking fantastic, actually. Come on back. Wait, 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 stop. Stop.
Stop! 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 Well, you're fixing to run over this chick. You're fixing to run over this fucking shit. It worked perfect, Pete. Here we go. Now it's going to come back down the hill. It's still on one wheel over there. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. All right, down we come. Looky there. Looky there. Instead of bottoming out and dragging the bumper and tearing it off, we had a safe execution of backing up a little hill and coming down a little hill without bottoming out. I'd say that's a fantastic job there. Fantastic job there, my friend Pete. It worked exactly, exactly like you said it would work. Okay, the wheels hit, everything looks good. Fabulous. Our bowling ball wheels are still intact. Bowling ball wheels are still okay. intact. So they is this a good system or no? Yeah, and thank God you got the twirling ones because if what you would have happened? Would it have twisted the frame? Been, oh yeah, it I'm up here, up. baby. It would have fucked them what up. What would have happened? Would it have twisted it, the frame? It probably would have twisted okay, it off. It so, tore it off. Or so the fancy. swivel wheels are the way to go. You gotta have swivel. Heavy duty casters. Heavy blah, duty. blah blah blah. Bowling let's, pin material. Let's get this uh, bumper painted. Let's get her down the road. We are done with this job. Okay, thank you, Minnie, the body shop girl, for all your assistance, technical and uh, painful, that is. And we did a beautiful job here. And I think the owner shouldn't be bitching and complaining, even though he's a bitcher and complainer. But that's the situation we got. That's what you want to do. And that's the deal of the steal of the situation that says, my... Uh, ultimate Sandpiper 90 foot fucking trailer will never bottom out again and give me grief. Right there. There you there. go. There you go. Alright, get that paint. Let's get her done. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.